made and 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 uh, whether we want to rejoice and glad it or not, it's still the day that the Lord has made. It's not going to change. We, we couldn't do nothing to, to, to earn seeing this day, but God allowed us to see this day. And, it's, and he just, he's just that kind of God. Uh, uh, his his uh, gifts and callings come without repentance. You know, that means see, he's not... He, he don't, he don't, how I many of you got kids and, and you want to say, I'm not, I'm not giving you nothing. Okay, maybe we'll just brought some not that you get nothing. No, we don't serve that kind of God. He, he gives us things that, that we don't even deserve or didn't do anything to earn it. Uh, he gives us supplies, our, our, our needs and some of our wants. You know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, there is a word from the Lord. I, I won't be before you long. Uh, it's a real, uh, familiar passage of scripture uh, it comes from Matthew chapter number 26 verses 36 I'm sorry verses uh, 20, 36 and 46 and um, and you get that one there uh, say amen and hold your finger there and put uh, maybe your program in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 verse number 9 we're going to try to tie those two scriptures together and then y'all can get out of here and get your chicken wings and watch uh, the Redskins in Miami and see if we're going to get the first round draft. <laughs> 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 uh, again, that's Matthew uh, chapter 26, verses 36 to 46. You have it, say amen. I'm going to be reading out the NIV version, kind of, kind of goes with the. Uh, uh, the the uh, theme for the message today, uh, I, I know uh, you all got the, the uh, King James Version, uh, so I'm going to read it, and it, it kind of reads the same, just a few words changed. Okay, and, and the Word of God says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here a while, while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away the second time and prayed, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Uh... <clears throat> Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power, not my power, Christ's power may rest on me. Amen. May the Lord have a leaning and blessing to his red word. Uh, uh, Father God, we thank you right now for this word. God, we thank you for the opportunity to speak. Give me number of thought and uh, and uh, be able to articulate this word in the way that you would have me to articulate. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, I'd like to use for a thought today. He is the God between a rock and a hard place. He is the God between a rock and a hard place. Just to give you a little backdrop about the, uh, this chapter. Early in the chapter, Jesus is uh, at the Last Supper, and he's telling the disciples that uh, he's about to be crucified. Yeah. 
and then uh, Mary uh, Lazarus' sister uh, has took the oil of the alabaster box and anointed him to prepare him for burial. And then he lets the disciples know that one of them is going to betray him. And he lets them know that it's going to be G uh, uh, Judas. And then now that brings us down to the garden of Gethsemane. Here he is the rock and he is uh, he is in a hard place. Have you ever been in a between a rock and a hard place? Um, just last week, <clears throat> Uh, my wife was gone away on, to the Bahamas and uh, I was doing some of my daily chores and and I got home late and I began to cut the, the lawn in the front and now that daylight saving time is about to uh, approach us, it gets dark earlier. So I finished the front lawn with no problem. By the time I got to the back, it started getting dark and, and, I, and it was so dark I couldn't see but uh, hard-headed Wally kept on mowing. Kept on mowing and <clears throat> Uh, right where the, the Rec TV has the, the dish at uh, in our yard, I don't know what they were thinking about, but they kind of buried the coaxial cord. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would always have to cut around it. Mm -hmm. and, but this time I, I had to kind of more you press and the wheel spin in the front, you know the kind of thing I'm talking about? And uh, ladies, y'all, I know y'all know too. Uh, so uh, it, it was going up on the coaxial cord and I tried to grab it, but it was too late and it snapped the line. And I said to myself, oh Lord. Because uh, my wife, she, she doesn't uh, require much. Uh, she doesn't ask me for many things. But uh, one thing that is required <clears throat> in our house is the television. Because yeah. if we don't have television, there's going to be a crisis at 1204 White Cliff Court. So I knew she would come back tomorrow. So I said to myself, oh, I can fix this myself. And I went in the house, and I normally have uh, extra things uh, for coaxial cords. And I, I, I looked, and I found something. I said, "Well, this might work." And I, I found a long cord. I clipped it in half and tried to use the, the, the two. And I was going back out. Then it started raining, and I said, "Lord, have mercy," because I was in between a rock and a hard place. I was trying to get this thing done before she get back. And so I finally I called Direct TV, and uh, they told me that uh, they could be out there the next day. And so I said, okay, good. Uh, between one and three, so I got off work and I was coming. I came home, one o'clock, no direct to me. Two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. And finally I get a call about 4.15. And they said, Mr. Sims, uh, we're sorry, we'll be there four eight. I said, what you say? We'll be there four eight. I said, what's four eight? Between four and eight. I said, oh no, that is not gonna work. That's not gonna work. I said, because I need this thing done now. So 4.30, no direct TV, five o'clock, six o'clock. I said, well, I'm just going to fix this thing myself. And they finally show up, and uh, <clears throat> he said to me, I'm a sin, we're sorry, and all that. I said, no, that's all, all that I need this thing fixed before tomorrow. And, and he says, I, 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 I'll take care. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it myself. He said, I know you think you knew how the story is going to end. But only God knows how the story is going to end because he's a God between a rock and a hard place. Amen. If you've ever been between a rock and a hard place, It'll make you say the same prayer over and over and over again. God, it's me again. Uh, I don't have anything new to tell you. I don't have any new details. I, every, everything the same way that I said on yesterday. Would you fix this or would you fix uh, uh, that? Or can you fix him or can you fix her? Can you, can you fix my situation? Uh, and the next day, God, it's me again. I have no new updates. I have no uh, new news, no new information. I'm coming to you because I have nobody else to turn to because you're the God between a rock and a hard place. Sometimes our greatest problem is not knowing for sure how things will turn out. People have uh, grandchildren and, and, and they will them their houses and their, and their, and their bank accounts at, at 12 years old because they think they know how the story is going to end. Spend thousands of dollars on elaborate weddings because they think they know how the story is going to end. Uh, they take a job on the other side of the world because they think they know how the story is going to end. But uh, there is a, a long way between 12 years old and 24 with little Johnny and things, a lot of things have happened in between. It's a long way from a wedding cake to a silver anniversary cake uh, and a lot of things have happened in between. And, 
uh, most people have a wedding years before they get married. Scripture says it like this, for this reason a man will leave his mother and father and cleave to a wife. Yeah. It's that cleaving part though. Uh, that cleaving part that's not done in an hour ceremony just because you say I do don't mean you're going to walk away feeling like your husband and, and you're going to uh, walk away and live like you're a wife. No, no, no. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like you're trying to say uh, I don't know if I'm all in yet. What do you mean by that, preacher? They are physically there, but that just because somebody is physically there doesn't mean that they are mentally and emotionally there. Amen. And therefore, they're not all in. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't even know that there's a part of them just as single as they were before they walk to the altar. All right, so you work the job, you punch the clock, and you do the assignment, but they're really not getting the best out of you because you have a certain insecurity about how the story is going to end. Uh, insecurity can keep you up all night. Insecurity uh, can make you overreact to a simple situation when you're between a rock and a hard place. What do I mean? I made it through this and I made it through that, but this thing I'm facing right now, I don't know if I can make it. And top it off with that, I'm tired. The story I just told you about cutting grass, it would have been uh, all right if it had caught me early during the day. But it would, it would have been all right, but because it caught me uh, uh, a little later in the day, it, it became a problem because when things catch you early in life, you're kind of optimistic. Mm -hmm. But when it catch you tired, and I was sweating, and I was tired, and, 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 and I was between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. What's that place? You I mean, it's a place where you're not uh, there yet. You're closer than you were before, but you're not there yet. Oh, yeah. And now it's a challenge to get to the next level and you're not sure that you got the option, you got the push, you got the desire that you used to have. And and add to that, have you ever secretly been between a rock and a hard place? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. Secretly smiling, you know, smiling, good morning, how you doing? Uh, bless and highly favored, hello Lord. And as soon as they walk away, you're like, oh God, you know, you know, because they don't know. They don't know, they don't know, they don't know. Surrounded by people who don't have a clue that you met me between a rock and a hard place. That I'm smiling between a rock and a hard place. That I'm walking between a rock and a hard place. That I'm singing on the praise team between a rock and a hard place. I'm hitting the notes, but I'm really not there. I'm really over there somewhere because I have done this so long that I can do what I'm do uh, between a rock and a hard place. Because if ever, if, 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 it's, it's very human to be between a rock and a hard place. It has nothing to do with you being rich. It has nothing to do with you being poor. It has nothing to do with you being white. It has nothing to do with you being black. It has nothing to do with being a male or a female. It's just a human thing to have uncertainty and to live your life between a rock and a hard place. Now this is uh, ordinary between you and I, but in the text here, this is not an ordinary person. This is Jesus. Jesus, the only begotten son, uh, yeah. He is the eternal God of, uh, uh, he, of the Father. He knows the beginning and he knows the end. He's not just Alpha. He's Omega. Yeah. He's not just the beginning. He's the end. Yeah. He's not just the first. He's the last. Yeah. He knows yeah. 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 how the story is going to end. Yeah. He knows he's going to rise again. Yeah. He knows and that he has the assurance that he will get out of this yeah. because he is the rock yeah. between a rock. He is the rock of our salvation. Yes, thank you. And he's in a hard place. Yes. So there's three things that you have to endure in your garden of Gethsemane. Now, now we all have a garden of Gethsemane, whether we want to admit that or not. Yes. The first thing that we have to endure is the process. Yes. Face to face with the process that precedes the promise. Sometimes you can have the promise, have the faith in the promise, believe that it's going to happen, but when you run head on with the process, the process is so painful that you say, I wonder. I know I will, but I wonder. I know you said I'm going to be a, I'm, I'm an overcomer, but I wonder. Yes. I, I know you've already said that I saw the end already, but I wonder. Yes. I already saw myself getting out of there, but I wonder. Yes. I already saw my children coming back, but I wonder. Yes. Is there anybody here that ever wondered? And ever been uncertain. Yes. But there's no need to be uncertain because he is the God between a rock yeah. and a hard place. Yes. 
Yeah. The next thing you have to endure in the Garden of Gethsemane is the alignment with human uh, will and God's will. That uh, uh, we're seeing is God's will uh, and, the, and the will of the Son are lining up together. Like 12 noon, when, when the, the, the second hand needle meets the hour hand needle at the same time. Okay, let me demonstrate this here. So we got this clock here, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, we don't have Y'all just gonna just tick, tick, tick. Okay, so it's ticking. All right. And, and we're going around. All right. Things are going on when you got trouble in your life, and it's just, you're going around, and the time is just going, and, and, and God is moving. Yeah. But He's not moving as fast as we want Him to move. Yeah. And we're still going. It's, we're a long way from us lining up our will with God's will. Yeah. And finally, Finally, we get it, and we go right to 12 noon. So what does that mean? What does that mean, lining up? Lining up the, the hour hand until they become one appointed in the same direction. That is how difficult it is to bring our will in alignment to the Father's will. It, it really is because sometimes, me, I'm talking about Wally Sims, God wants things for us that we don't want for ourselves. And sometimes God makes choices for us without asking our opinions. And it seems like we would like for it to be a time in our life that God would um, uh, have be the minute hand and we would be the hour hand. And um, he would bring his power and he would bring his will and he'll bring his resources and he'll bring his potential in line with what we want. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Let him do some moving around sometime, huh? Because I already know how I want this thing to turn out. Why Why do we have to be the one to move, huh? Why Why do I have to be the one to give up my plan? Why do I have to give up you know, my goals? And, and, and who said I want to be a preacher? Who said I want to be married? Who, who, who? So it's clear to me that we are watching the wheel turn into alignment so that all of us yes, go ahead, sir. are both pointing in the same direction, yes. 12 noon, yes. just like this clock. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And being aligned with God's will. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now in reality what's going on we're getting an opportunity to see what it means to walk in alignment with God. Yes. It, uh, okay so the, the, the last thing that I want you to, to understand uh, is uh, there is the pressure of walking with God. Isaiah said like this, Isaiah 40, 31 said like this, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up from wings with eagles. They shall run and not be real. They shall walk and not faint. But it's the waiting that can get become great fresh. And it seems unfair that I have to wait uh, uh, on the Lord. So, so, okay, let me see. Let me show you what it kind of looks like. See, uh, we don't want to uh, keep in, in step with the Lord. So sometimes we walk in front of the Lord. Come on, walk with me. We walk in front of the Lord. I know what I want to do. Uh, I, I'm not ready to, uh, to live holy. I'm not ready uh, to do what you want me to do. I'm going to do my own thing. It's my thing. Do what I want to do. And then there are times when uh, we walk ahead of God. You ain't walk. God, I don't want to. I don't want to walk with you. Uh, I, I know what I want to do on this thing here. I don't need you. I didn't ask you uh, to help me on this. We ain't walk in front of me again. And 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 uh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just. I know. I don't want. I don't want to live holy. I, I can live holy just on Sunday. I don't want to live holy on Monday through Friday. Yeah. I want to do my own thing. But then there's some of us who step when God says step. And there's some of us that move when God says move. And that's what God wants us to do, be aligned with him. Say, God, I'm not going to move till you move. That I'm not going to step till you step. 
And I'm going to put my hand in your hand. And as long as my hand's in your hand, I can do the things that you want me to do. And I can line my will with your will. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 So, so that's, that's what it means to walk in line with what God says to do and not do our own thing. Uh -huh. So, so uh, Jesus, Jesus in the text went back three times checking on folk that were somewhere else, on folk that were doing their own thing, that were walking ahead of God and doing things that uh, they didn't want to do. They were, they were sleeping. And so while Jesus is under pressure, so the last thing is the garden is the pressure. Yeah. So ahead, this is how it goes. He, yeah. he goes to talk to the disciples. Mm -hmm. Can't get no help here. Yeah. And he goes over here and he talks to the father. Yeah. He says, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. This bitter cup. Mm -hmm. Don't need to know here. Goes back over here to the disciples. He said, can you just watch with me one hour yeah. while I pray? Yeah. They get nothing over here. Goes back over here. He says, Father, if it be thy will, that bitter cup, then yeah. it pass. Not my will, but thy will. But the third time, yeah. went back over there, and he found out they were still sleeping. He told them, sleep on. Yeah. Yes, he said, sleep on. So what, what does that mean? What does all that mean, uh, preacher? He said, uh, 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 it was the third time yeah. was the process of the pressure. Yeah. What do you mean? Paul did it three times when he asked God to take the thorn away from him. Uh -huh. And praying about the same thing. Jesus praying about the same thing before he had made contact with the Father. That was the pressure. He yeah. kept praying. Yeah. Yes. What are you saying? You know, uh, uh, maybe your marriage doesn't work. Uh, maybe uh, the, the, your child's going crazy. But uh, according to 2 Corinthians 12 uh, verse 9 says, uh, my grace is sufficient. Uh, God says, I, what he says, I got you covered. You don't need what you think that you need. All you need is me because my grace is sufficient. But Lord, I'm in a wheelchair. My grace is sufficient. But Lord, I got more bills than money. My grace is sufficient. But Lord, my mama's sick. My grace is sufficient. Lord, my dad is sick, but my grace is sufficient. I don't know what I'm going to do. My job is closed. My grace is sufficient. Uh, just because something isn't working right now doesn't mean that everything isn't working. you got to thank God for what's working while you're waiting on God to fix what ain't working. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes a happy ending is not uh, how you wanted things to work out. Sometimes the happy ending is when you get to a place. Oh God, okay, I'm gonna show you one more time. You uh, sometimes the happy ending is this. Okay, uh, uh, um, um, um. okay, I'm gonna use you one more time. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, watch that, put that down. Yeah. Uh, can I use? Can I use you? Yeah, you. Okay, I'm gonna use you. You jump first. Okay. All right. So here's what I want you to do. Okay, I want you to just. Run around, let's go here. Walk around. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get in front of us. Come on. Sometimes a happy ending. Go in front. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. Sometimes run, run, run. I know you run. Sometimes the happy ending is seeing what's in front of you. Yeah. And still walking with the Lord. Still here. Go ahead and scream. Scream for me. Scream. Scream. I know you can scream. I know you know how to scream. 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 Hearing the noise that's in front of you, but you're still walking with the Lord. Keep on going. Keep on going. Be all right. Be all right. What am I saying? The Lord wants you to know that don't worry about what things look like. Don't worry about what things sound like. Don't worry about uh, oh, people talking about, well, I thought you, you trusted in the Lord. See, th the waiting part is you got to trust God when you can't trace him. You got to believe him when you don't see nothing happening. Uh, uh, the check ain't coming to mail yet, but you got to keep on believing. Keep on hoping. Keep on praying. 
Don't worry about it. That's why he says, my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And my power is made perfect in your weakness. Uh, your weakness uh, could be, I don't know what, you, what you're struggling with. I don't know. You, you know, because we come to church in this building with masks on. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, sir. People can't see your face. They see your eyes. They see your hallelujah. They see your praise the Lord. But they can't see the real you. I mean the you that you go at night and the, and, 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 and tears when the, when the house is quiet. Tears run down your face. Say, Lord, if one more thing happens. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, 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 I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I, I don't. Under, I, I, I know that 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 that, you, that you're fighting a battle that you think that you're trying to use your own will. And and until your will line up with the Father's will, that I try to show you, ain't nothing going to work right. When your will line up with the Father's will, and it's painful, it's that bitter cup that that Jesus can stand, Father. If, if it's been a cup, pass me. Yeah. Not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. That's the cup. And let me tell you, everybody in here got a cup. Yeah. Your cup don't look like my cup. Your cup ain't got everything that my cup got in. But you got a cup. Yeah. And what you all you have to do is align your will yeah. with the will of the Father. Hallelujah. And that's when all, I'm not saying all your problems going to dissipate. No, I'm not saying that. I'm telling you that, that as long as you're in the will of the Father, yeah. if Jesus can get in the will of the Father, get on the cross, uh, be nailed to the cross and pierced in the side and thrown up, uh, oh my God, oh my God. And he never said a mumbling word. What about us? The first time of trouble, we, oh Lord, what I'm going to do? We, 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 don't, we don't do what Jesus did. He prayed three times. He didn't give up on the Father. You can't give up on God. Because God won't give up on you. He won't give up on you. Why is that? Because he's a God between a rock and a hard place. God bless you. If you feel like your life is full of pain, full of lost joy, full of no hope in sight, I'm here to tell you that there's a, a person who can take on all of those things that you're feeling and give you a new and a better life. And his name is Jesus Christ. If you accept him as your savior of your sins, and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, if you accept him and, and receive the new and greater life that he has for you, then you'll be saved for all of eternity. If you receive him today, you just say this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, but I thank you that you came to earth, lived the life of righteousness, that died on the cross to pay for my sins, and you died in my place, and you rose again so that I can be raised to new life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior to lead and guide me in the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that simple prayer, I believe that you have gotten to this new life and you have been freed from sin and restored to a right relationship with God. Get in a good Bible-based church and keep God first place. God bless you.